I'm joined now by Dr. Caroline Apovian, who is here now to talk about the Endocrine Society's new guidelines for the pharmacological management of the obese patient. Thank you so much for being here. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. So let's discuss those new guidelines. Well, the new guideline, it's really the first of its kind because we are targeting the patient with obesity, with comorbidities, and we are suggesting the use of weight neutral or medications that promote weight loss to treat the obese patient who has comorbidities such as type 2 diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia. And so, and, and plus, we talk about medications that can promote weight gain and the alternatives for that patient. So for example, we know that the sulfonylureas can manage blood, blood glucose in a patient with type 2 diabetes, but they cause weight gain. And so we recommend substituting for a GLP-1 agonist or an SGLT2 inhibitor when you're managing a patient with obesity you're trying to get them to lose weight. That's one aspect of the guideline. The second aspect is we talk about the, the pharmacotherapy for, for obesity, the three medications that are out there to help people lose weight. And so it's a, two, a dual part guideline. We talk about the medications that cause and exacerbate obesity and medications that you can use to help patients lose weight. As with type 2 diabetes, there are a number of guidelines. What's unique about these new ones? So what's unique about this guideline is that it comes at the tail end of the publication of the, the updated obesity guideline that was published by TOS, the Obesity Society, the American Heart Association, and the American College of Cardiology, just published in 2013. That guideline talked about diet, dietary prescriptions for patients with obesity and bariatric surgery and mentioned nothing about medications. So the Endocrine Society decided that, a, that an important guideline would be to talk about the pharmacotherapy of the obese patient and also to talk about the medications that can exacerbate weight gain. So that's what's unique about this guideline. It's really a corollary to the national obesity update guidelines. When it comes to obesity and research, things are changing so rapidly. When do you expect new guidelines from the Endocrine Society? So it's a very important time for obesity treatment. We have an obesity medicine certification program that's ongoing, so we're, we're certifying endocrinologists and primary care providers to treat obesity. We also have the influx of new medications for obesity treatment. So we just had the approval of lorcaserin and fentramine to pyramate. We are about to see two more approvals coming down the pike in six months to two years. So Contrave and Loraglutide for obesity. So this guideline is going to have to be updated probably within one or two years. So it's just, it's, it's just important to keep updated. We're gonna get two more medications to add to our arsenal. And then on top of that, we just had the, the V-block, vagal blocker, go through the devices panel at the FDA. And I think we're gonna have to update this eventually for devices as well. So we have, probably in, in two more years, we're gonna have to update it, but that's okay. It's just, we're, we're seeing an explosion of medications and devices for the treatment of obesity. And how do you think these guidelines will impact the field? The impact of, on the field with this guideline is tremendous. So now we have endocrinologists who are armed with medications that can help their obese patient lose weight with type two diabetes, with hypertension, with cardiovascular disease and with, with uh, hyperlipidemia. So, and we also have endocrinologists armed with a new algorithm to treat patients with obesity and diabetes. So use the medications that, will, that are weight neutral or promote weight loss first. And then if you're not achieving glycemic control, 
then go for the medications like the insulins and the sulfonylureas, but try the new medications for type 2 diabetes first. The metformins, the, um, the GLP-1 agonists, and the SGLT2 inhibitors. This is a major paradigm shift for the field. Treatment of obesity. And the AMA just announced last year that ob obesity is a disease and should be treated as one. And so obesity plus diabetes, obesity plus hypertension, you've got to know how to treat it so that you're not exacerbating the obesity by treating the diabetes and the hypertension. Dr. Carolina Povian, thank you so much for being here. It's my pleasure.